Phil and Susan Urschler, and they became the first married couple to climb the highest peaks on each of the seven continents together. We had just um, gone across the Hillary Step, which was very frightening to me, so your thought also is, how are you going to get back down? Congratulations, it's quite an achievement. Made history. So how does a non-climber prepare oneself mentally and physically to climb Mount Everest? I fell back on the only process I knew, and it's the process that we all learn in these jobs in going after top performance and very large corporate objectives. Over 60 eight-foot ladders can be used to fix that entire ice fall. Sometimes four ladders are used. Four ladders can be lashed together to get us over those really wide ones. Now that sounds quite sensible, but when you're walking across them, there's this real unnerving bounce, and then they start swaying. And then if you look down in there, they appear to be bottomless. Two times we didn't make the top of Everest, two failed attempts. But each time we just regrouped, refocused, reset the goal. And also, as we learn here, no doesn't necessarily mean no. If you're going after the right thing, in fact, no means not yet. Not yet. We need to go back, go back, go back. Just do something different. Change what we're doing. And that is just as true in our businesses. A team outperforms an individual every single time on every single task. Team outperforms an individual. My life became two quantifiable goals. 29,035 feet and $300 million in a sales objective. So 29,035 feet, and I'm so pleased we have all these technical operations folks in the audience and DSCs, and because and, uh, it's a highly technical process. I wrote 29,035 feet on two yellow sticky notes. And I stuck one on my computer at home, one on my computer at work. That number's high, and it's high for any mountaineer. Really high for me. But what I found was that by looking at it several times a day, over the course of months, it became doable in my mind. I can go there. After many, many hours, we are finally in position to go for the summit. And, you know, we all have images in our minds of moments that are important to us, just as individuals. This is one of mine. Those beautiful, jagged Himalayas against the blue sky in the morning sun. And all that that represented, I'll never forget that image. I had time to take it all in, because here's your rate of climb. You're at three breaths a step. You're for hours. And, and then all the emotions. I, I think every emotion I've ever had is converging on you at that moment. And most of it's just extreme happiness. You're so happy for yourself. You're so happy for your team. And then I, we're just like steps away from the summit and I lost it. I couldn't control the tears because I'm hearing Phil behind me yelling, you made it, baby, you made it. And finally at 10.20 in the morning, on May 16, 2002, Phil and I took that last step, and we ended up standing on the top together. That was definitely the best day of my life. That sense of accomplishment to stand there with Phil was worth all the pain, the hard work, the sacrifice, and the effort. And now you got to get back down.